When Rivian announced earnings, I was looking for a couple of things. I was looking for what's the cash burn of the company, what's the trajectory going into the R2 launch, and what is management's expectations for that vehicle and profitability for R1. And one of the things that really stuck out to me as kind of missing where the market is in electric vehicles is the pricing of the R2 and the expectation that the R2 and Rivian overall is going to have a 25% gross margin. Management said that again, and there's really no evidence that Rivian is ever going to get to the point where they have a 25% gross margin on their vehicles. And I think the R2, which is going to launch at a $45,000 price point in 2026, so two years from now, is already going to be behind the curve if they keep that pricing intact. So I want to dig into exactly what the competitive landscape looks like, because I think if they expect to launch the R2 at $45,000, if they expect to keep the R1S and the R1T at $70,000 plus, Rivian is in for a rude awakening because there is just not going to be that much demand because there are better options in the market. That's what I'm going to dig into today. My name is Travis William. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. So let's look at what Rivian says they're gonna be making and then the competition. This is the R2, uh, really nice specs. I think this could be a really attractive vehicle. Five seats, 300 miles of range, 300 plus miles of range is what Rivian says. And a nice size trunk, a miniature version of the R1S if you will. But here's their letter to investors and says that they're gonna launch the R2 at a price point of around $45,000 in the first half of 2026. So we're two years from this having any sort of impact on the company's financials and the price point of $45,000. This just jumped out to me as missing the boat. And especially when you look at their financial projections and their insistence that they're gonna be able to be free cash flow positive at their current 215,000 units of capacity in normal Illinois and potentially reaching $25,000 gross margin. All, all those things seemed a little off to me. And why do they seem off? They seem off because a $45,000 price point for a five seat, relatively small SUV seems way too expensive. This is the Chevy Equinox. This is gonna launch later this year. 319 miles of range, not the fastest vehicle until not built to be a performance vehicle. They're saying that this is gonna be a $42,000 starting price point, but there has been plenty of reporting that Chevy now thinks that the vehicle is going to start at about $35,000. I have seen this in multiple places directly from General Motors. The only thing I can think of is if maybe they're including that with the tax credit, but I believe that does not include the tax credit. So there's one competitor that's going to be priced lower. Here's another one. The EX30 from Volvo is already on the market, MSRP of $35,000, maybe a little bit smaller than the R2. But if you're just looking for a low cost SUV in the electric vehicle space, this looks like a pretty good option. Again, maybe not quite as big as what Rivian's making with the R2, but we're talking about a vehicle that is at a much more attractive price point. And I think price is gonna become much more important for Rivian. Another one, the Eve starts at $42,600 and you get the $7,500 tax credit on that. So less expensive, 300 mile range. Again, maybe a little bit smaller, but still a five passenger vehicle. The ID4, that starts at $40,000, 291 miles of range. This is probably a more similar size, maybe not quite as big a trunk, but also five seater. So much lower price point than you're getting with the R2 and it's available today. And finally, the ID Buzz is another one that is coming to market. This is gonna be a little bit bigger, probably even bigger than the R2. This is rumored to be right around $50,000. So maybe a little bit higher price point, but another larger scale option than you get with the R2, and it's gonna be for sale in the US reportedly this year. So these are just a few of the competitive options that are either available now or available later this year, not two years from now, that are already lower price points. And I think this is the fundamental problem for Rivian is that they're pricing their vehicles too high, expecting that those prices are gonna stick when actually the trend is going the opposite direction. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Over the past year, it's become extremely clear that the electric vehicle market is going to be much more competitive in the future than it has been in the past. When Rivian came out with their vehicles, they were really the only compelling truck and SUV on the market. 
So they were answering a real customer need. They had a ton of reservations, but over time it became clear that those reservations didn't all turn into actual sales. And so that's why I have bringing, been bringing up on this channel the demand problem that I saw Rivian having. And I think that's only been exacerbated over the last year or so as the company canceled their plans to build a plant in Georgia. That means that they're gonna pull back on production of the R1S and R1T and even the EDV vehicle because they're gonna be shoving the R2 production into the normal Illinois facility. All of these things combine to show that demand is fundamentally a problem for Rivian. If they think that they are gonna be able to charge a premium to other automakers, I think that's just a losing strategy for Rivian. And so at the end of the day, investors have to think about are, is Rivian going to get to the point where they can be profitable and positive free cash flow? All the comments that they made on the recent conference call was that they expect the current facility to be able to be free cash flow positive, excluding any growth capital. So basically, we can get to 215,000 units of production, including the R2, maybe even the R3, but we won't have enough capital to be able to grow beyond that with the existing capital that's on the balance sheet. But if that free cash flow assumption is based on selling R1 and R2 vehicles for over $70,000 and selling the R2 for over $45,000, I think Rivian's gonna run into a demand problem where they're not gonna have enough demand to actually sell the entire 215,000 units of capacity and they're gonna have to lower their prices and lower their margins. This is exactly what Tesla has done over the past year. This is exactly what GM has done as they've kind of pulled back on their expansion plans and their pricing for electric vehicles. This is just a much more competitive market. If you were pricing the R2 vehicle at $35,000, that would be a really compelling vehicle versus some of the competitors that I showed earlier. But $45,000, now you're talking about your competition being a three row ICE vehicle. That's just not a compelling comparison for an electric vehicle. And right now, that's the comparison that consumers are making. As you're going mass market, you're not just competing with electric vehicles, you're competing with all other vehicles, in, including internal combustion engine vehicles. You can buy a brand new three row Volkswagen Atlas for less than we're talking about being able to get the R2 in two years. I think that's just a really troubling comparison for Rivian and that's fundamentally the problem that I think the company has. There's not enough demand for Rivian vehicles at the current price point and if they lower their price point, they're not gonna have the margins to be able to be free cash flow positive and ultimately survive long-term. So this is the catch 22 that you have with Rivian. And this is ultimately the problem is that manufacturing and the auto business is a very, very difficult business. There is a reason that there has been no major new competitors until Tesla came along in really the mid 2010s. It had been decades since a new automaker had reached any sort of scale and the reason is it's very, very tough to do. You gotta have the best market conditions, you have to have the best vehicles, and you have to have superior manufacturing. Rivian hasn't shown that can, it can actually do that. And that's another reason that I'm staying out of the stock. But what do you think about Rivian's competitive position and their pricing of their vehicles? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching everybody. See you here next time.